I would argue that the concept of functions is the most important in computer science. As you may probably already know, in our exercises, we can only use the right function. What is that? I hope you are already familiar with the concept of functions, uh, with the concept of stack, heap, memory management, processes, and so forth. If you don't, just check in the description. I will leave you some links to the resources I've used myself to learn these things, which are very, very important. From a programmer perspective, from a programmer point of view, a function is just a black box that is able to take some input and give back some specific outputs. Inside the function happens something that I can know or cannot know. The really important part is that I know the inputs and the outputs. That's it. In our specific case, the right function is a black box for us. It has been defined and implemented by some other programmers, and we personally want just to use it in our code to do something. What? We just want to send in the display some characters. Indeed, the write function is able to take as input some characters and send them back into the display. So I personally, as a programmer, can think about the write function as a black box that is able to take some dead characters and send them into the display. Now, to use this function, I have to include the unistd.h file. What is that? Let me explain better to you this concept. As you can see here from Wikipedia, we have uh, the definition of the unistd.h file. In the C and C++ programming languages, this file is the name of the header file that provides access to the POSIX operating system API. POSIX operating system and API. These three are three very important words, which are three very big rabbit holes. So if you want to understand very thoroughly these three words, you need so much time, which is not the case for a simple video of five, maximum 10 minutes that I want to do. I want to explain to you very, very shortly these three words. As you may know, the computer is managed by the operating system. It can be Mac OS, like in our case with the Apple machines, Windows and Linux and many others. These three are of course the most famous ones. The operating system is like the master program that is handling the computer resources. To understand an operating system, you need a university course on operating system. I will leave you a link in the description if you're fancy, but it is a long way. Long story short, if I want to write some characters into the display, like we want to do, we cannot perform this action with our code, but we can use it with the help of the operating system. I cannot write myself a code that directly handles the resources of the computer. Everything is mediated through the help of the operating system. So when I want to write characters into the display, the operating system is like, whoa, 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 what you want to do here? Just tell me what you want to do and I will perform the task. That, that's basically it. This is very, very shortly what an operating system is. I hope you, <laughs> you get curious and dig for yourself really what is an operating system. But by now, a master program that is handling all the things of a computer, like the display. Okay, then we have uh, the POSIX. POSIX is a standard that is gonna standardize all the operating system. So if you want to use a specific function to perform a specific function, like writing stuff into the display, you have a function that is always the same. It is standardized. For example, we have the write function that has the same application program interface. It means that it is written in the same fashion for all the operating system. Long story short, the write function takes for all the operating system the same input and gives back the same output. Namely, it types the character into the display. Mine is a very shallow and superficial explanation that won't satisfy absolutely anything of your interest. So I highly suggest to you to dig a little bit. I will leave you the link in the description. By now, keep in mind this. I want to write data on the display. How can I do it? Provided that the operating system is handling all the resources included in the display. I need a function, which is an operating system function that I can call so I can use the display. This is the only thing you have to know. As you can see from the wiki page, the file uni standard that stands for Unix standard. Unix is an operating system. MacOS is Unix-like. This file contains all these functions that you, you really need to check for yourself. Uh, for example, we have functions that handle the file system. We have function that handle processes, which are, which is just a fancy name for programs that are running. And we have, of course, our function write, as you can see here, right? Our functions write that allows us to send some material into the standard output, okay? You need just to grasp the basic idea that including this file in our program, I have access to all these functions, included the write function that I just showed you, this one. And uh, basically that's it. File included, I can use all of these, okay? These are all functions of the operating system itself. The operating system is just the master program that controls 
all the things of a computer. So the display itself. If I want to use the display, I need to ask to the operating system. So in a very shallow fashion, this is the Unix standard header file. Okay, so I include in my code the Unix standard header file. It contains all the functions, all the functions that the operating system perform, such as sending characters into the display. So having included this file, I can use the write function, which is the one that I can use in my exercises. As I was telling you before, the write function is just a black box to me, right? I don't really need to know how it is implemented and the inner workings of this function. I just need to know how it works and how I can use it, right? When I say how to use it, what do I really mean? Well, I mean that I need to know the API, which is the application programming interface. Long story short, the API is like the description how to use this function. It tells me how many data, which kind of data are gonna be into the input and which kind of results I will get given the inputs. That's basically the, the API. This is another very important concept in computer science that you definitely need to understand. So I include my file, Unix standard. I can use all the functions. I write my code, I write my main function, which is the access point of all the program in C. My main function is gonna call the write function. I will insert inside the write function arguments, all the inputs required by the function, required by the API, application programming interface, and then boom, something magical is gonna happen and I have an output into my display, which is the characters I've plugged inside the arguments. Magic, right? So in this slide, I wanna shed light to the API. As you can see, the API is just the data that need to be plugged into the write function as arguments. I have the name of the function and then I have the tree data required. I have a file description, which is an integer. So I have a number in the first slot. Later, I will explain what this number is. In the second slot, I have a buffer. A buffer is just a fancy name from a slot in memory. So I need an address, a pointer. I hope you already know what is a pointer. And then in the last slot, I need an integer, which is the number of bytes that I want to take from the buffer I gave in the previous slot. Basically, that's it. This is the API of the write function. I hope it is clear. So as you can see from the image, I have my black box with the magician inside. I just plug all the data that are necessary given the API. The first value is a one. What is that? You will know it later. The following is a buffer, which is a string constant, hello world, which is a series of characters indeed. And the third is a 13, which is 13 byte. Indeed, I have 13 characters to take into my buffer. I run and boom, I have hello world on my display. Let's start by seeing this write function in action. So first and foremost, I have to include my Unix standard file, which contains all the magical stuff that allows me to use the Unix functions, the operating system functions, which are called system functions. After that, I just create my function, which is ft underscore putchar. So this is my function for the exercises of school 42. This function doesn't return me anything, so I have a void. So this is a function that performs an action, but doesn't return a result. And this function takes as an input a char, a char that I've called C. Inside my function, I have the write system call, and this file has the one as a first input, the address of C, so a pointer as a, second, as a second output, because the write function API requires an address in this slot. And then I have one, which stands for one byte, right? Here in my main function, I have a call to the FT put char with an argument A, which is a lower character A. Underneath, I have the same call to the same function with an input 97, just to show you that 97 and lowercase a are the same thing for the computer. Okay, let's compile and run. Okay, I just insert the command to compile. I'm pretty sure you know, enter. So as expected, as an output, I have two lowercase a. So the right function has worked properly and uh, yeah, it was pretty simple and straightforward. So why 97 is equal to lowercase a? Well, because of the ASCII code. Now I'm gonna show you, you can type uh, uh, man ASCII. This is gonna show you the, the ASCII code. I hope you are familiar with this concept. As you can see, all the characters are mapped into some numbers. So essentially for the computer that has only binary slots, the characters are just numbers. In this case, lowercase a is 97. Very simple, right? Now I wanna let you understand better this concept of uh, file descriptor. What is a file descriptor? The first slot of my write function API. A very big, big concept for operating system is that everything inside a computer is just a file. So the display is a file, like a simple word file is a file, right? So in this program, what do I do? I include my file Unix standard, so I can use my write function. I include another file, which is file control header. This is a file that contains all the functions that allows you to control files. 
And here I include the file standard input output, which you 100% know because it contains the printf function. Here I use the function open, which is gonna open a file. In this case, I'm gonna call it file.txt. These are flags which are gonna open the file in reading and writing mode. And uh, if not exist, this file is gonna be created, okay? So this is a notation that is gonna help the open function uh, handle the file. You don't really need to understand these things right now. These are the permission bits. Again, you don't need to understand it now. Just keep in mind that this is a function that is gonna create a file in my working directory, okay? So this open function is inside my file control header file, and it returns a file descriptor. A file descriptor is a ticket of a file that is given to a program running. Let me explain it better. Here I call the write function, but this time I don't plug one in the first loft, but I plug the file descriptor that open has gave me back. So I write into this file, this buffer, which is the hello, I recall to you that a string constant is just a pointer, so a buffer, five bytes from the buffer I gave. At the end of the program, I have just a printf that is gonna print the value of the file descriptor of the file.txt, just out of curiosity. So let's see this program in action. In your opinion, right, what is gonna do? So as usual, compilation and launching, boom, I get three. But I don't get the hello string like before, why? Let me list all the files inside my working directory. As I can see, I have a file.txt. Hmm. If I watch the content of the file.txt, I get the hello of the write function, right? So this time the write function has sent the byte from the buffer into this file and not into the display, which is a file. Do you recall? I told you. Now let me tweak the program to show you better. Now I wrote this leap function, which is a function that frees the program because I want to check underneath the what's what is happening. Check it, let's let's check it out. So again, I'm gonna launch my program, but this time I want it to run in the background. So I had this ampersand, boom, sent. Now I want to see all the processes that are running in the background. I just plug this ps slash elf. And as you can see, I have all the processes running and at the bottom, I have the last two that you have seen. Now I do this command, ls off, see, a dot out. This command is showing me all the files that the program, that the process, a process is just a program running, so it is just a fancy word for a program, has opened. So my process, add all these files, as you can see here, opened to use for itself, right? So inside these files, there is all the magic that is allowing the program to run, like all the functions, implementation and stuff. But now it is not the point. At the bottom, you can see these files, which are, which have a specific file descriptor. Do you see here? The FD stands for file descriptor. So we have these files, which have the number, which have the file descriptor zero, one, two, and the number three in this case. The file zero, one, and two are the display. TTYS stands for teletyper, which is the display itself. So when I say to my write function, please write, send me some bytes from this buffer into this file. When I say one, I'm, say, I'm saying the display. This is made uh, automatically by the operating system. It's setting the file descriptor zero, one, and two to the, to the um, terminal, which is a file for the operating system point of view. The file descriptor three in this case, what is that? Well, it is the file that I've created with the open function. Do you remember? It is the file.txt. So remember this image here. And let's go back to the program. Here in my write function, in this file descriptor, it is like I've written this number, right? The number three, which is the one gave me back by the open function, okay? So I'm telling uh, dear write function, put these characters inside this file. Easy, no? When on the contrary, I say one, what is gonna happen? Well, this time I have all the characters inside my display, but wait a minute, zero, one, and two are all of them the display itself, right? Let's try something. I wanna replace my one with the zero. It should work the same, right? Because the display is still the display. Let's try. Indeed, it works because it is the same file. It is the same display. You saw it before, right? Again, it should work also with the file number, file descriptor two. Let's try. Again, send, go. It works perfectly. Now, I'm gonna insert again my sleep uh, function so I can check the process uh, underneath the dude. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna launch in the background and then I'm gonna watch again uh, of the, all the files opened by this, this process. Again, if you want to really understand what I'm doing, you need to understand the operating systems and how processes are handled, okay? So 
don't worry if you don't totally understand what I'm doing. Okay, I open my files, my files opened by this process. Okay, as you can see here at the bottom, I have my files, zero, one, and two, which are my terminal, my um, teletyper. And again, I have my file number three, which stands for the file that it is opened by the open function. But this time I'm not using it, right? The fact that I have different file descriptor for the same uh, terminal, again, is a thing that lies upon uh, the operating system. So you don't really need to understand now. You just need to understand that the program, aka a process running, has always some files open. Everything inside a computer is a file, as well as the keyboard and the display itself. So when I use the write function, I need to tell in which file I want to write stuff. It can be a text file or it can be a device file, which is the display in this case. The display is showed by these file descriptors because of operating system stuff. If, for example, I write the number four here, and now I delete my open function and my sleep function, what is going to happen in your opinion? Okay, let's clear and let it run. Nothing. It's going to happen nothing because we don't have a file number four for this specific process, right? I rewrite my sleep function with 20 seconds. I need the sleep function because otherwise the process is going to get killed. Uh, it is get erased from the system. So I just launch on the background. I see all the files open by this process. Okay. As you can see, I don't have any more my file number three because I don't have any more my function open. So I have only my file number zero, one and two, which are the default. These files are the standard input, standard output, and standard error. I leave you some material in the description to um, get a better understanding of these concepts. All right, this is the basic introduction to the write function, which is the most important function uh, for now, for the first exercises, okay? Thank you.